Hi, my name is Mary Nettleman. I'm a librarian at the Anaheim Public Library. And today I'm going to be doing the story, The Cactus Flower Bakery by Harry Allard. Illustrations by Dan Delaney. Sonny McFarland lived in a beautiful hole in the middle of the Texas desert. Life in the desert was pleasant, but Sonny was lonely. She didn't have any neighbors or friends, and she often wondered why. One day, an old jackrabbit came ambling by on his mule. Yoo-hoo, Sonny called out. How about a nice big glass of iced tea? Oh, and I've just baked a batch of oatmeal cookies. The jackrabbit took one look at Sonny, dug in his spurs, and fled in a cloud of dust. Odd, said Sonny to herself as she slipped back into her hole. A week later, Sonny saw an old tortoise bicycling in her direction. Would you like a nice cold glass of lemonade, Sonny asked. Why, uh, yes, uh, dear, the tortoise said, rummaging through her purse for her glasses. The tortoise took a good look at Sonny and screamed. Then she pedaled away just as fast as her old tortoise legs would pedal. Sonny was terribly hurt. Why, she wondered, did everyone run away from her? Then, one day, about a month later, Sonny spotted a figure weaving across the desert. Hello, she called out without much hope. Well, hello there, replied the armadillo. Would you mind if I dropped in and rested for a while? Oh, well, come right in, said Sonny. My name, said the armadillo, in between bites of Sonny's cloud-light lemon chiffon pie, is Stuart B. Preston. I'm a mailman, but ever since I broke my beautiful aviator glasses, I haven't been able to deliver the mail. I can't see where I'm going. But, well, you poor thing, said Sonny. Do you have another piece of pie? You know, I, I can't quite see your face, but you've got a lovely voice, Stuart said. Tell me, Sonny, just what kind of animal are you anyway? Oh, uh, would you like a black cow, Stuart? Sonny asked. What's that? asked Stuart. Oh, it's a generous scoop of French vanilla ice cream and a tall, frosty glass of root beer, Sonny explained. Stuart and Sonny chit-chatted the day away, and before they knew it, it was night. It was too dark for Stuart to walk back to Dallas, especially without his glasses. You are welcome to spend the night here, Sonny said. Why, that sounds like a splendid idea, said Stuart. So, humming merrily, Sonny made up the bed in her neat little guest room. Stuart stayed another day, then a week, and then a month. He and Sonny had so much to talk about. They also played a lot of games together. And between the talks and games, they ate a lot of Sonny's cakes, cookies, pies, and macaroons. One day, as Sonny was whipping up an angel food cake, Stuart said, Sonny, we ought to open a bakery. You can bake, and I can sell. Why, Stuart, that's a brilliant idea. And so, the Cactus Flower Bakery was born. It did a booming business. By the end of the week, Stuart and Sonny had made a lot of money. Now it was Sonny's turn to have a brilliant idea. Stuart, she said, I think we have enough money to buy you a new pair of aviator glasses. Stuart was thrilled. It took almost two weeks for Stuart's glasses to arrive from Fort Worth. Stuart was so excited that Sonny had to help him untie the string from the box. Try them on, Sonny said. Stuart did. He looked out at the sky. He looked at the desert. And then he looked at Sonny. Stuart screamed and bolted for the door. Sonny had never been so hurt in her whole life. She stopped baking, she stopped eating, and finally Sonny took to her bed. She just lay there with her eyes closed, and each day Sonny grew thinner. One day there was a timid knock at the door, but Sonny was too weak to even whisper, Come in. There was another knock at the door, harder this time. The door opened. There were footsteps in the hall, and then the sound of footsteps on the stairs. Sonny, said a familiar voice, I'm so ashamed of myself. Sonny opened her eyes and saw Stuart. She was overjoyed, though she didn't have the strength to say so. Stuart nursed Sonny back to health with ginger ale and macaroons and never did go back to Dallas. He gave up his job as a mailman to stay in the desert with Sonny. What's more, Stuart explained to all the desert creatures what a kind and gentle snake Sonny really was. Stuart and Sonny still live together in the desert, so if you're ever on Route 126 heading towards El Paso, will you just stop in at their bakery? The lemonade is always cold, and the cake is the best in Texas. The end.